Hey YouTube, Alan back with another package and pickups video and finally getting around to kind of Christmas present goodies and whatnot video. Uh, much delayed. Maybe it we've been pretending it's nearly 2013 uh, Christmas goodies video. But uh, how and ever, that was kind of partly because of the hiatus. I wanted to clear some stuff out from beforehand. So let's get down to it. Goodies, goodies, goodies from Christmas. Um, largely modern stuff this year with a little bit of paraphernalia and I'm going to go through the paraphernalia stuff first. Um, first up we have some Super Mario eggs and stickers. So the thing is I'll probably never eat these now because they're in packaging. I don't know, I guess that would be good for the waistline, you know, New Year's resolution and I'll cut down on it so don't eat your Mario sweets. Mini chop eggs, yep. And on the Mario edibles. Well, it's not entirely Mario edible. It's a, um, it's really cool actually. These are, it's a Mario ceramic mug. So it's got um, Yoshi, Toad, uh, Luigi, and Mario himself. With this kind of, uh, there's all mushrooms on the packaging and all marshmallows and whatnot in the cup. So pretty damn cool. A little more tempted to open this one to get the cup actually. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, that's actually great. I love that uh, cup. What is this? Bon Bon Buddies apparently, 2012 Nintendo, so look for bonbonbuddies.com if you want a Mario cup with a, what they call them, ceramic mug with mini mellows, mallows. And then, very fishy, this next one, it's a uh, Pac-Man stress ball, yeah, could probably do with that alright, stressful times called for stressful measures. Now, apparently it was three euros, so I don't I know. <laughs> See, this, this price sticker has been taken off partly at the back, but if they're gonna stick it on the packaging itself, probably doesn't help. But yeah. I always like actually that if you think about it, the Pac-Man's eyes are the shape of Pac-Man himself. So, there we go, to help with my stress. And finally, now, I'm not really sure if this is gaming paraphernalia or not, but on the back here it says uh, Zelda Ocarina Time Plastic Ocarina. And the box itself just says Ocarina and it doesn't mention Zelda and it's, it's basically just a little blue plastic Ocarina. So I don't know is it meant to be Zelda Ocarina and I'm decided that just there I'm not going to open it. I was going to, I have had it out but I seem to have self-taped the back open. I don't really fancy it right now. We've got plenty to get on with so we'll leave it. Uh, because it's not, it's not Zelda branded or anything, so I, I'm not really sure. And then, got to get back to more Mario sweeties. It's uh, Super Mario Candy Cane. Very Christmassy, now that it's not longer Christmas. And uh, actually, look at Yoshi there. He looks like he's got a bit of a pot belly coming on. Hmm, I think Yoshi should cut down on the candy cane. Now, at the back it says, Brush teeth, be active, eat healthy, buy candy cane. Well, except for the last bit, but, yep. I guess they're trying to say, like, part of a healthy diet, you know. Mario's part of a healthy diet. So the characters are all around the box, and they're on the canes themselves. Again, I'll probably keep that in packaging. Um, actually, have, I didn't have any candy cane this year. Hmm, that's surprising, thinking about it. So, the games themselves. Um, so they're all largely, as I said, modern systems. Well, one of the systems, I guess you could say it's nearly retro now, or what, however you class it, I don't know. But we'll start off with some 3DS stuff. And first up is Spirit Camera. Now, um, this is one, if you're not familiar with it, it's basically, I don't know why I filmed it back in the box, you can easily look it up. It's all complete, because I assume it was new. And I'm just going off on a tangent now. HMV sticker. HMV, even when you get new games, seem to delight in giving you a game that's already unsealed. The next game you'll see is sealed, properly sealed. This is published by Nintendo. It should have a Nintendo seal. So it bugs me when you get new games and they're not sealed, like properly sealed. Uh, I don't know. May as well buy them online if you want them properly sealed. But anyway, Spirit Camera. Back to the game itself. Comes with this little, well they call it a book, but it, to me it feels like a manual. Because it's just um, basically pictures and whatnot and inside it, inside each of the pages, they're a little thicker than a normal manual. It's basically AR cards. So you're meant to use the camera and stuff comes out of the book or something and then you can look around the room and see ghosts and 
I don't know, it, it's, it's an augmented reality game, basically. It sounded kind of interesting, and the perfect gift in many ways, because it's not something I would have picked up for myself, but definitely something I'm interested in trying out. And, for whatever reason, there's two of the quick start guides, which seems to be what they give you now in games instead of an actual manual. Basically, put it in, turn it on. Um, I'll have more on manuals later, because the lack of manuals bugs me. But I did like what they've done with the um, back of the box. It probably won't come out on camera, but in some of these kind of holes, they have little eyes that are supposedly watching you, which is a nice touch. Um, if, you, if you're going to have crappy shit boxes for, um, you know, to deal with, you know, in, you know, environmentally, I don't know, sound boxes, at least put some decent artwork on it. Oh, I forgot. No, I took took out these leaflets and then just threw them to the side. But, uh, yeah. There we go. And then, a, a properly sealed, so you know it's, it's, it's definitely new. It's Super Mario, why did I tap that? Like a, a bit of tapping OCD going on. But Super Mario 3D Land, I've, I played a tiny, tiny bit of this. Seems like a good game. Um, it's Mario, so you know, can't exactly be bad, really, can it? If you like Mario, you know, it's going to be good. And I'm sure it'll be great once I get into it. Got to charge up the 3DS and give it a, give it a whirl. I charged the 3DS a while back up thinking I was going to play some games and then, and then it didn't. But however, oh. we'll go on to, we'll keep on the Nintendo theme. May as well finish all the Nintendo stuff out first. With a couple of Wii games, um, series basically, Red Steel 1. And Red Steel 2, Wii Motion Plus game and then the kind of launch game. I've only played a tiny bit of these. Red Steel was, to me, I think this is like the zombie U of the Wii. Got a lot of pre-release hype and not, whatnot. And then sort of didn't really live up to the expectation because it was carrying a kind of a shoulder of, you know, burden as it were. Or a shoulder of burden? Hmm. I'm sure you know what I meant. <laughs> but interestingly, um, because the, these ones are obviously second hand, but they came with a load of like a Wii points card and a Wii Sports point card and a Wii set up manuals as well as Red Steel ones. So lots of manuals. So uh, I don't know if I can use these points cards because I'm I probably already have a Wii online. So I'll see. I'll see, says the blind man. But anyway, yeah, Red Steel. If this had just been an, a release that got moderate kind of attention, it probably would have reviewed more favorably. It probably re would have reviewed more like the sequel, which got a bit more attention as being a good example of how to use Wii Motion Plus. But because it was a launch title and one of the few kind of exclusive third party launch titles that was, you know, having a bit of effort put in, you know, it kind of had a lot to live up to and kind of didn't. But, you know, I'll give them a whirl when I get around to it. Um, yeah, this one as well will be interesting to see how well the Wii Motion does, or do I have to recalibrate all the time? But there's the Wii stuff, and that ends the Nintendo chapter. Now, do 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 do. A while back, I showed off this game that I got in a charity shop, Assassin's Creed One. A great fun playing this. I can understand people's complaints. It takes a little bit to warm up, and it then gets kind of repetitive. So you're doing the exact same thing in the exact same places over and over and over again. I guess you could say that's like any other open world game, but it really, really does seem repetitive or more repetitive than, than most of them. However, I quite enjoyed it for that fact and I really did capture the feeling of being an assassin. And if you didn't want to be an assassin and just wanted to go in and kick ass, great, worked. So went up and actually got, um, Got the sequel, Assassin's Creed 2. Um, tried to get it in CX but couldn't, so I think this was from Amazon. And this is the Game of the Year edition because it comes with an additional game sequence. Oh, like an extra memory basically, and what is it? Yeah, it includes the Battle of Forley. Oh, well, that, I don't think that sounds right. Um, the Bonfire of the Vanities and three secret Templar locations. Which, funny enough, the Bonfire of the Vanities, I didn't quite twig that this was. 
um, basically an extra chapter. I was thinking, God, they're really stretching out the ending here. Because uh, it seemed like I was getting toward going to what would be a final f confrontation. And all of a sudden, I have to go after all these nine general. I'm like, what the hell? It makes more sense when I realize, oh, that was the download content. So it was actually fairly cool because it opened up an extra part of a city and whatnot. Um, and it was all on the disc, so no downloading required. And obviously, it is, these were new, so it was, it was all there. Although, I've got Lego Rock Band because it must be in the Xbox at the moment. But I tell you what, um, talk about cheapy discs. Now, if you can hear... See, that's a disc moving around. That's not... I mean, I don't want my discs to be able to rattle around freely like that. If you take up a CD box, just a dual case CD, it'll be manufactured for 20, 30 years nearly, and you shake it, you won't hear the disc move as long as all the t-shirts in a place, which, you know, it's easy enough to get boxes like that that are. So why on earth do we have, I think this one's the exact same. Yeah, there's nothing in this but a disc. Oh, no, there's a leaflet too. Why on earth do we want these boxes, so-called eco-friendly boxes that basically just don't protect your discs for the damn? Um, this one isn't so bad, but this one here, it's so flimsy to feel, and these things actually form ridges. So basically, if your disc is shaking around in there, and look how bendable and flexible this crap is. It's more like paper than, than plastic. But you basically will be rubbing the disc against against uh, that UV thing. Oh, look, that's just... Roop. Can't retain its shape at all. Absolute nonsense. I mean, it just encourages people to throw them away, if you ask me. And the insert is nearly fallen out, so I'll fix that in a bit. But, um, I've completed this game, actually. I've completed Assassin's Creed 1 and 2. It's a good game. There was a few changes that I wasn't entirely gone on. Things like the reputation system, where, they, you know, as you performed unsocial, acceptable actions, um, such as killing people, your, your basically notoriety went up. And I kind of made it a little tedious to be dispatching guards and whatnot because you kept having to go and tear down posters to reduce your notoriety. Nice idea, but I found it a little tiring. And I, for whatever, oh, this one only has a partial regeneration system. This one has a full health regeneration system. So basically, just, you know, block the guard for a few seconds and your health all comes back. This one doesn't. Makes it a bit trickier. You have to basically pay more attention. This one you just go in, hacking and slashing and do what you want. So it's kind of easier in that regard, which I quite like because, you know, I was just playing to have a, a bit of fun, not to, you know, master the game. But I enjoyed it, got to the end, and, and the download content, and picked up then this one too, the uh, next one in the kind of Assassin's Creed 2 line, and that's Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. And apparently this is the Da Vinci edition, so it, but it includes download content that you actually have to download. So, give it a box but it's basically just you know the game I'm not gonna take it out of the box now although it is actually I did open I did break a seal and ah. uh, because I will play it eventually I'll probably take I've taken a break though from Assassin's Creed at the moment but yeah once I got into number two I'm sure I'll enjoy this one as well uh, they're kind of a series that if you get into you can kind of keep rolling with so let me see one more Xbox game then finish off the Xbox line and this was definitely a Prezi this one this was the orange box um, so you know Half-Life Half-Life 2 Episode 2 Portal Team Fortress and what else oh and Episode 1 for Half-Life as well so yeah it was a good deal and uh, I actually got have I shown it before but basically I got Half-Life 1 on the PlayStation 2 and kind of meant to play that I played it a little bit struggled to get into it but I've heard such good things about Half-Life and Portal said, you know what, I'll put this on a kind of a Christmas list and if anyone gets it, great. So, I don't know will I play this before Half-Life 1 or what will I do there. I might play Portal and give that a shot when I get around to it because I don't think that's actually really tied into the Half-Life stories or if it is, it's probably marginal. So, there we go. Let me know if I should go back and do Half-Life 1 first before cracking out into any of these. Anyway, that ends the, the uh, Xbox stuff. So, it's down to the... Yeah, just Sony left. 
And let me see. I guess I'll go with the one that I've played the most. I've actually finished this one as well. Great fun doing it. And that was um, Batman Arkham City. Now, after playing Assassin's Creed, I actually really struggled to get into this. I was doing Assassin's Creed type controls and it just was messing me up big time. But I did get, I, I stuck with it and got into it. Enjoyed it. Probably enjoyed the first one more. But it is a good game when you, if, if you get into the style and feel of the game. They do capture the universe quite well. However, one thing I did find a bit shit was what you got in the box. Now, obviously, you didn't get that PlayStation 1 game. <laughs> the, the game's in the PlayStation 3. So, came with this player's Catwoman download code, which I haven't redeemed yet, so I'll put that away. An advertisement for uh, DC. Another advertisement for basically DC as well. And then a manual. And frankly, they may as well not have bothered. It is so flimsy. You have you open it up and you get your two pages of warning bullshit. The end, of course, you have your, you know, more licensing and warranty nonsense. So you have table of contents. I don't know. Can you see it there? Three items, and they are getting started. Page two, PlayStation Network. Page three, techn technical support and warranty back cover. That's it. So it's basically getting started is put the disc in and it installs there's a bit about 3D and that's it next page is the warranty stuff M don't if you're if this is all you're going to do don't even bother putting a manual in the box because people can figure out the put it in the console bit there was actually a few points where I was struggling with the controls and would have liked button combinations and I went I would actually look at the manual but so I know a lot, a lot of people say oh there's no point with manuals anymore you know, if you're going to go this route and have basically nothing in them and have manuals do nothing, then there is no point. If you're actually going to flesh out the world, then yeah, they can actually add great benefit to the title. So, that was a bit lame, but the game itself was good fun. I enjoyed it. And a hell of a lot cheaper than the Wii U version for basically the same thing. So, there we go. Let me see. Next up then is... I haven't played this one yet, but it's uh, supposedly, I haven't played the, the original release of these, it's the Ico and Shadow Colossus HD Remastered Collection thing or whatever. So, yeah. Great, I've heard great things about both of these on the PlayStation 2. They're, they're not the cheapest games to get for that system either. And when, you know, when you have a HD collection, kind of like the God of War collection and whatnot, it can be quite nice to actually just try them together and easy to get release. Although, to be fair, for these classic releases, this is getting harder to get. And this is the European version, and I think it has a... Yeah, there's another download code in it, so not that I know what the download is, actually. Do, do, do. God, I don't even say. But yeah, it has a download code for something, and I don't even know what it is. But what is rather cool is that there's a reversible cover. So if you see there, um, take the disc out. It has the original covers for um, Ico and Shadow Classes on the inside, so you can flip it around. That's that's a nice touch, I thought, because it's um, it's I I actually debated which one I'll uh, I like I'll put on. I left it with the standard uh, PlayStation Three cover for the moment, because I guess the spine would match up better with these other games. You know, you have like that, so you've got the PS Three. But then again, older games had the older PlayStation logo, so who knows. Then we actually have a game from America, and it is 3D Dot Game Heroes. Now, um, the great thing about the PlayStation 3 is, by and large, with the exception of one game, it's completely region free. You see it's got one there, but it plays fine in a European system, so you can just get American games, which is a huge relief because it can be either much harder to get the European game, or just they weren't released, as I'll get to in the next game. Um, and again, this one has a nice reverse, or not a reversible, but it's got an insert. So only often do these with these games. Cool little insert. Um, yeah, so the game itself is, you know, so I want to be Zelda. It's it's remarkable how much it, it's like the original Legend of Zelda. Um, which is kind of why I was interested in it. To be honest, though, because maybe it gets more imaginative later on. I only played the first up to the first dungeon, but because it's so derivative of Zelda, it doesn't really feel like it brings enough 
to the table on its own. And Zelda dramatically improved after the first, you know, incarnation. And by sticking closer to the first one, personally I feel you're sticking closer to one of the weaker Zeldas, even if it is a classic. So I'm not sure how this one will go. It seems good, it's solid, don't get me wrong. And it's worth trying out. But I wasn't bowled over. Um, but maybe I was just in the mood for you know more visceral killing, which is why I played Batman and Assassin's Creed. So gotta let that anger vent or something. Cool spine though, I like that. Better than the vanilla spines. But anyway, moving on then, we have the final game again, US release exclusive, and it is the Journey Collection. Uh, these are three download games, so it's uh, Flower, sorry, Flow, Flower, and Journey. And a friend of mine over in America actually recommended Journey. So I've been keeping an eye on it, but I tend not to like the download titles. I prefer to physical releases. And the only thing that there was actually a physical release in America. So as for that, um, apparently it requires 2 gig of hard drive space. Jesus Christ. That's a lot. I don't know if all the content downloads, or you know, does it install and then you don't need the disc. That'd be pretty nice. And apparently it's got 3 mini games too. So. Yeah, decent collection. Um, if you are want to try them out, I guess it's probably easier to download them, but I didn't really want to download them. Plus, my PlayStation isn't online most of the time, so it was nearly easier just to get the disc. But, yeah, import from America. It was this... I don't, don't remember where this came from, but it was... It came very fast, and it was you know fairly priced, if I recall. And I was told, because I kind of had to help the person <laughs> that, that actually got this from me. Uh, because they weren't sure when it was given that it wasn't your ping, it's, it's just, you know, it's, it's on the shops, <laughs> that type of thing. But anyway, one more, actually, I, that isn't the last one, there's one more thing from the PlayStation, and that is, uh, I guess the biggest item, the Wonder Book. So this is the Wonder Book, uh, what you call it, set. Mm, what's in the box? That'll do. So we have the Wonder Book, the game, or the software, I guess. The camera and the PlayStation 3 lollipop wand. Um, the move controller. So so this is kind of like a move controller set. Minus the nunchuck and the wonder book. Uh, I've seen actually my cousin playing this. <laughs> she got it too. Um, and I do really enjoy the... I do really enjoy the Harry Potter books. If you don't enjoy Harry Potter. I would say don't even consider this. And I haven't even tried it. But it's just because it's going to be basically an interactive AR based book, you want to be interested in Harry Potter and J.K. Rowling to, to give a damn. And I will say, it is kind of pricey for what's basically just a book. You know, it's one of those things where Sony had, I think, a good idea for expanding the market and um, getting more children and, you know, people who might not play games into, into the market. But... Uh, the price of these wonder books will probably have to reduce in order for it to become mainstream or in, in any way more than a kind of a Christmas thing. So I am actually interested to, and looking forward to giving this a whirl because, you know, as I said, I like Harry Potter. Definitely not something for everyone though. Although it's got a cool box. I don't know if it's seen all the kind of shiny book spells and woo. Anyway, enough of shiny. There's my Christmas goodies. I feel there was something else I've forgotten. I always feel that way these days. So I guess we'll leave it there, because it was enough anyway, it was plenty to keep me going. And as I said, I've been playing Batman and Assassin's Creed and whatnot, so lots of good modern gaming going on at the moment. See? Not all about the retro gaming, not at all. Actually, it's been quite a bit of time modern gaming these days. But anyway, we'll leave it there. Thanks as always for watching, I really have rambled on. I'm throat is drying up, it's saying you, you, you've, you've definitely done enough. Leave it, leave it. Um, we'll catch you again soon and yeah I, I feel like I was going somewhere with that but apparently I wasn't so yeah until next time